Welcome to the first edition of City Journal. I'm Tessa Coleman, and I'm joined here today with Mayor Scherzer. Um, I've heard about Wings and Wheels, and I was wondering what it is. Yeah, Wings and Wheels is a way to promote uh, the Mary Municipal Airport. Uh, there's still a lot of people in our community that don't know we have an airport in Marion, let alone an airport that is run by the city government. Uh, going back to the 1950s, uh, we uh, took control of the airport out on Pole Lane Road, and uh, the uh, airport commission, along with the aviation director out there, Audrey Wagner, decided that they wanted to get more exposure to the Marion Municipal Airport. So they came up with this concept called Wings and Wheels. It's a fly-in, drive-in, and it will be this Saturday, September the 19th, and it starts at 8.30 a.m. and it goes to 4 p.m. on Saturday afternoon. Now, if there's a rain date, um, it is on Sunday, September 20th, uh, but we're hoping for good weather this coming Saturday. Uh, the airport is located at 1530 Pole Lane Road. Um, some of the viewers may actually know where it is, uh, and some may not, but that's the reason for the Wings and Wheels uh, event that they're having. Some of the feature things going on this weekend uh, at this particular show is there are going to be some World War II vintage planes out there. Uh, there's going to be a bomber from that era. Uh, but the marquee plane this weekend is going to be a 1928 Ford Tri-Motor. And that'll be interesting to see because this plane has been flying since 1928. And they're going to have activities for some of the younger uh, participants out there. It's a free event. Uh, it costs nothing to get in. Uh, no charge for parking. Uh, they're going to have food vendors there, which of course you're going to have to pay for the food yourself. Uh, but they'll offer breakfasts and lunches out there. And I'd just like to thank the airport commission and the sponsors of Wings and Wheels. I think it's a great opportunity to showcase the Mary Municipal Airport. You'll have a chance to look at the 1950s terminal that exists on the airport. Uh, so we are actually in line for a new terminal. We're in line to get a grant from the Federal Aviation Administration. So I'm hopeful in the next year or two that we're going to break ground on a new terminal building out there and that'll really, really be good for our airport. A lot of folks don't uh, realize uh, we don't have commercial flights out there. Uh, there was a point in time in the history of the airport where there were commercial flights back in the 50s or 60s, uh, but there are a lot of corporate jets that fly in to the Marion Airport. And um, they come in and they service the, the corporations uh, in our own community whether it be Nucor or Frontier or, or Whirlpool Corporation, but they also stop on their way to and from the Columbus market. Uh, a lot of the uh, corporate uh, pilots find it easier and more convenient to land in Marion and then have their guests drive down to Columbus to do their business. So I'm excited about uh, this Sunday's event. I'll be there Sunday morning at 8.30 to open up Wings and Wheels and hopefully that this can become a tradition for the Marion Municipal Airport. Sounds great. Um, the senior levy, I've heard a little bit about, and I just wanted to know what are some of the Marion, senior, the Marion County senior services that we have? Yeah, a lot of folks might not know watching the show that uh, Marion County has a senior services, and they don't actually provide direct services to senior citizens in Marion County. However, the dollars that, that they come into that department they give those back in grants, and the Marion Senior Center, which is run by the city of Marion, out on uh, uh, State Route uh, 309 uh, East, out by the old depot, uh, run by Steve Bodicher, uh, he applies for grants every year from the Marion Senior Services levy, and they provide things like transportation for seniors, um, home shopping uh, programs for homebound seniors that don't have an opportunity to get out much or not at all. Uh, they provide home delivery for meals, and they also provide uh, medical transportation. Transportation is probably the biggest thing uh, that the Marion Senior Center, through the Marion County Senior Services, provides to seniors in our community. So I think it's important that we support the Marion Senior Services uh, because it does uh, a lot for the Marion Senior Center. Steve Bodicher does a great job out there. We have a new activities director at the Marion Senior Center. Uh, Christy Wink was recently hired to coordinate all the activities at the Marion Senior Center, and we're really excited about her talents and what she can do out there. All right. Um, we'll be back after these messages. Wouldn't it be great if money grew on trees? Unfortunately, it doesn't. 
But at Harding High School, our guidance counselors are here to help students find the money needed for college. In fact, our students typically qualify for merit-based scholarships, athletic awards, or even general awards based on financial need. No, money doesn't grow on trees, but at Marion City Schools, we can help you plant the seeds of success by guiding you towards a wealth of scholarship money. At Marion City Schools, your future begins today. You know, I love the club. It's, it's the reason I'm here. It's, it's taught me so many lessons, and I can talk about it in a positive way, in an honest way, for the rest of my life. You know, in a community or in a town, your role models are the people that you deal with, that, that, that are in your face, that you talk to, that you can ask questions to, not necessarily some basketball player or actor on, on screen. Boys and girls clubs, great futures start here. Welcome back. Um, so I've been seeing a lot of construction going on around Marion, and I just want to know an update about, about city projects or... Yeah, there's been a great deal of construction taking place this summer. We're actually very fortunate to have so much construction going on in our community. Uh, some of the projects that are still ongoing that we uh, will wrap up this year, uh, we put off a couple projects until after the Popcorn Festival. Uh, because we didn't want to interfere with all the other closed roads uh, in the city at that particular week. Uh, we still are working on a La Tourette sewer project on the west end of town. Uh, we're waiting on a couple of uh, private utilities to get their uh, lines out of the way. But after La Tourette is finished, what you're going to see is a product that looks very much like the Greenwood Street project. Not only are there going to be new sewers, uh, but we're going to have a new road, curbs, gutters, sidewalks, and a lot of the private utilities are putting in new lines as well. So we're excited about these uh, major street uh, replacement projects that we're doing. Uh, we still have some street resurfacing to do, believe it or not. Um, our normal street resurfacing is completed, uh, but we've got some work to do on Center Street. We're still gonna do one lane of Center Street, and when you get to West Center Street, down by the Power Shovel and uh, the Shovel Lounge, we're actually gonna go curb to curb uh, down there and we're waiting on one permit from the railroad company uh, the railroad so we can uh, cross the tracks safely uh, as our crews are down there working we contract out all this work this is not work that we do uh, with our city departments uh, so we'll have a paving company come in and they'll pave uh, as I said curb to curb on West Center Street down to David so we're excited about that Mark Street is also uh, in line to be paved this year We'll start about Jefferson Street. We'll go westbound all the way to Prospect Street and get uh, Mark Street all paved. And then we're gonna do some pavement uh, repair. So we noticed over the past couple years on State Street, Church Street, and also on Prospect Street uh, that the base is failing. Underneath the asphalt, uh, there should be a nice firm base underneath there. And uh, when the base fails, you start to see the asphalt on top it begins to crumble away and separate and pull away. So we're going to do some base repairs on those three streets I just mentioned. And that's a good thing also because we're going to finish all these projects this year. Uh, next year we're going to get started on a major sewer replacement project on Ballantyne Street. And that will be a big project for us starting probably about late February, early March, depending upon the weather this year. And that's just mentioning what we have left to do this year. Of course, we did a lot of projects already. Can you tell me a little bit about some of the ones that have been completed? Sure, well, I mentioned Greenwood Street. If you've been down Greenwood Street, it looks so much better. Mm -hmm. That street was in s such a need of repair, uh, as well as the sewers. Uh, we did our citywide resurfacing. We did a joint project with the county. We uh, repaved uh, Barks Road. Uh, part of Barks Road is in the city, part of it's in the county. So we uh, collaboratively worked together with the county to get Barks Road paved. They paid for their half, we paid for ours, uh, but we had one contractor do the whole thing to keep the cost uh, affordable to uh, the taxpayers. Uh, Mike Cheney in the Parks Department has done a lot of work at Sawyer Ludwig Park. Uh, they put in what they call an edible forest or a community garden. Uh, they just ran some water lines out there to service that area uh, with a drinking fountain and some walking paths. And we also did a number of sidewalk improvements. Uh, the city's gotten away from uh, significant sidewalk improvements over the years. 
uh, but we're using some of our grant money to replace sidewalks uh, like we did at the intersection of uh, State and Center Street. And that was done right before the popcorn festival. We were really concerned that they might not finish that project, uh, but they did. And we've doubled down on our street resurfacing. In the past two years, we have spent about three and a half million dollars resurfacing streets. Normally, we only spend three quarters of a million dollars. So we're paving a lot more streets in the past two years than we have. We want to continue to do that coming out of an economic recession. Uh, it certainly hurt our revenues. A fraction of our municipal income tax is used to pave city streets. Um, but we tapped into some money from the Ohio Department of Transportation that has been allocated for the city of Marion. And that's why we were able to spend three and a half million dollars paving streets. Oh, um, speaking of money and grants, can you tell me what the Lodo grant is and what it means? Yeah, I, we've talked about Lodo before, but a lot of folks uh, still don't know what uh, the acronym Lodo stands for. Uh, Lodo is really a subcommittee of the downtown uh, organization, and Lodo stands for Lower Downtown. It is a section of the downtown that encompasses commercial properties as well as residential neighborhoods. And it goes from about Orchard Street down to Blaine, and then on the north and south side, it's Center Street and Church Street. So this entire neighborhood came together, and we've been working with the property owners and the business owners. And again, working cooperatively together, we applied for a nationally competitive community development block grant, and we were fortunate enough to get $300,000 for the Lodo neighborhood. And we're going to use that money to improve public infrastructure in that neighborhood. $118,000 are going to be spent on new sidewalks in that neighborhood. Now, we can only use that $300,000 in that neighborhood. We can't go outside of those boundaries I just mentioned. $80,000 is going to be used to demolish um, homes that are, are beyond repair. Uh, the city will take ownership of those lots. They'll go into our land bank and we'll try and resell those lots out of the city land bank once we've removed the blighted property from that neighborhood. Uh, $70,000 is going to go to Home Street. Now a lot of people don't know Home Street is one of the few brick streets that still exists in the city of Marion. And the Lodo group thought it was important to preserve the brick street. It adds a lot of character mm -hmm. to the neighborhood. And as that neighborhood and the commercial side of that uh, Lodo district starts to build up, it'd be nice to have that brick street preserved in that neighborhood. Uh, we're going to take $60,000 to build a retaining wall around a parking lot. Uh, that parking lot is at the corner of Church and Orchard. Uh, I can remember about five years ago where nobody parked in this parking lot, and today, because of the college students that are living in the Harding Hotel and the work that some of the business owners are doing in the Lodo area, there are a lot more cars in that parking lot. So we thought it might be nice to dress up that corner mm -hmm. and enhance it a little bit and uh, see how it improves the neighborhood as well. And then lastly, we're going to use $12,000 uh, to put a new roof on the old recreation center. Uh, of course, some people may remember the old rec center as the old freshman building. It was a uh, number of different uh, grades were in that school when it was part of the Marion City Schools uh, uh, building uh, arsenal, if you will. So there are activities that take place at the rec center and it's time to put a new roof on. So we're excited about Loda. We're excited about the progress that's being made. And we're able to do this because of the cooperation of the property owners and the business owners in that neighborhood. We see the same thing happening at the west end of town uh, with the West Side Neighborhood Group. So we can partner with neighborhood groups to make a significant improvement in a neighborhood if we have participation from those that live and work there. Oh, it sounds like we're doing a lot of good things right now. Well, we believe we are. <laughs> <laughs> Everything that we do uh, entails money, and that's why we're going after grants, whether they be federal grants or state grants. Uh, but I think it's important to make these improvements uh, to build neighborhoods in, in Marion. I definitely agree. We'll be back after these messages. 
Candy Shack and Cafe conveniently located in downtown Marion at 187 West Center Street welcomes you Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. or on Saturday from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. to enjoy our homemade soups, one-of-a-kind salads, and always fresh, never-frozen sandwiches. Every day offers a delicious special, and of course, don't forget to finish off your meal with a piece of our delicious homemade Amish gourmet candy. Have any special events, an upcoming wedding, or a surprise birthday party? Don't forget to ask us about our individually specialized catering services. So dine in, carry out, or call for free delivery available within Marion City Limits. Call today at 740-223-0900. The Candy Shack and Cafe. Come in and let's make your life a little sweeter. We're back at the City Journal. Um, last week was the Popcorn Festival, and I just wanted to just hear your perspective on how it went and how you think Marion reacted. Yeah, you know, I think for 35 years, the Marion Popcorn Festival has been put on, and uh, from the city's perspective, we work very closely with the Popcorn Committee. Uh, we start meeting uh, in late spring, early summer to ensure that it's a, a smooth festival and any anything that we can work on from last year to make better, uh, we certainly do that. Uh, so from the city's perspective, I, I thought things went well. Uh, other than the weather, Friday night, a little rainy, uh, but uh, they tell me it was a good crowd for uh, Rodney Atkins, who, who played at the Popcorn Festival. Um, I actually went up there early and, and then uh, made it to the Harding game and stood in the rain all night. So, uh, But Friday night, uh, other than the rain, Saturday night, great crowds for warrants. Uh, Maybe Warrant's not your style of music, mine either, but I thought they put on a nice concert. And during the day I was up there and it seemed as if there was a good crowd during the days, uh, Thursday and Friday during the day, it was very nice and Saturday uh, even nicer. So again, from our perspective, things went well. Um, I think it's important that the city participate in the Marion Popcorn Festival. Of course, after 35 years, how, how could we step away from it? Um, Chief uh, Tony Zwally of the fire department uh, told us in staff meeting yesterday uh, that there was zero additional cost in the fire department uh, because of uh, the popcorn festival. And uh, I'm waiting on reports from the street and sanitation department uh, to see what their costs were. Uh, of course, that is the biggest cost mm -hmm. to the city is uh, the closure of the streets, uh, the overtime, uh, the parade. Uh, we have to uh, put up a lot of barricades to close for the parade route and then take them down that evening. Uh, and then the sanitation department uh, has a little extra duties, uh, emptying trash cans in the downtown area and then cleaning up uh, later on after the popcorn festival closes down. Uh, the police department, actually a lot of people don't know this, but the, the popcorn committee actually uh, pays us to do uh, uh, for police protection during the popcorn festival. So that's been a big help. Uh, so I'm looking forward to seeing the final numbers, uh, what the cost is to the city. We build that into our budget, so we anticipate a cost. We just need to keep that cost at a level that we can afford, and we've been able to do that for the past eight years, and I'm happy to have such a good relationship with the popcorn uh, committee. Um, you know, that was a, a good popcorn festival. There are actually a lot of things going on. We mentioned Wings and Wheels. Uh, there's a Ohio Historical, or actually it's a Marion County Historical Society event taking place at Sawyer Ludwig Park this weekend. So if you just uh, open your eyes and check things out, there's always something going on. It may not always interest you, but uh, you know, take the kids out to some of these events. Uh, the two events this weekend that I just mentioned are free. There's no cover charge to get in. So get out and enjoy it. Definitely a good idea. Um, so there's been some talk about Safe Routes to School, a new thing that's going on. Can you tell me about that? Yeah, Safe Routes to School was a Ohio Department of Transportation grant that we applied for a few years back and we just finished that project and the biggest part of that project was a walking bridge over a ditch that goes through um, uh, Fair Park and so right behind Taft Elementary School there is now a walking bridge uh, that kids can walk and jog and ride their bikes over to get to and from school uh, safe and quick. And uh, so we're, again, excited about these types of grants that we're able to get to make an enhancement, make an investment to the neighborhood in public infrastructure. I know I definitely live in that neighborhood and I will use that bridge. <laughs> um, can you tell me a little bit about the 911 dispatch? 
Yeah, uh, if you remember earlier this summer when we were not on the air because you were on summer break, (laughs) uh, but we signed an agreement with the county to merge our 911 and dispatch centers. And that was really an historic groundbreaking event because this community has been talking about the possibilities of doing this for decades. And we got it done this summer. And right now, as you're watching this show, the sheriff's dispatchers are working side by side with city dispatchers in City Hall. And they're learning each other's jobs, they're getting to know each other's protocols, and they're doing dispatching all over the county at one centralized location. In fact, we're waiting on the new dispatch center to be built over in the county building. We hope that'll be opened up by the end of this year or by January 1st. And at that point in time, those employees of the two dispatches will become equals to one another. They will become county employees servicing the entire county when it comes to 911 calls and dispatch calls for the public services out there in our county. Also, we will be the second or maybe third county in the state of Ohio to go to Next Generation 911. And what Next Generation 911 really means is now they're going to be able to take video for a 911 call. You think about some of the events that have happened all over this country, and uh, you you don't want to call 911 because you don't want the person to hear you call. So you take out your phone, you shoot a video, and you can send it right to our dispatch center to alert them of what's going on. And then they can send uh, the sheriff, the police, the highway patrol, whoever they need to, to come to uh, the, the aid of a situation. So I'm excited about the collaboration and cooperation that we have with county government. We're seeing a, a, a very heightened level of collaboration and cooperation taking place in the Marion community. And I can go on and give you more examples of how we're collaborating together. And that's what we need to build on in Marion City and Marion County. If we can build on that, that is going to resolve a lot of the maybe petty little issues that exist out there, and we're starting to take care of those things. Sounds very effective. Um, Thank you for being here, Mr. Mayor Schertzer. Thank Um, you. That's it for this edition of City Journal.